My name is Brandon. I work as an assembler here at Cornell Pump. Um, today we're working on a hot oil seal. Uh, to be we're going to start with putting a black mark on the sleeve and marking where the end of the stuffing box will go. So now we're going to pick up the back plate. We're going to put it onto the bracket of the frame and we're going to mark the shaft where the stuffing box ends using a scribe. You want to put a couple bolts in the back plate just to make sure that it's tight up against the register on the bracket. So as I tighten these down, I want to make note that the, the 1.78 inch measurement from the stuffing box face is set out by the seal manufacturer for this specific size of seal. It will change depending on the diameter of the seal and the specific seal you're using. You want to rest against the stuffing box face and just scribe a mark inside where you, you penned on the shaft uh, where that stuffing box face ends. And make sure that you scribe not too deep into the shaft to leave a gouge, but enough that you can see it in the mark that you made. Then we're going to take the back plate back off. Um, in the box is the stationary seat. Um, I'm using that for the diameter, which is a two and a half inch seal. Uh, in my notes page, I have that it is, the seal is set 1.78 inches from the stuffing box face. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure from the mark we made up on the back side of the back plate. Um, then I'm going to use a scribe and I'm just going to mark in my um, blacked out area where the back side of my seal should land. Um, next we're going to be putting the stationary seat into the seal gland. Um, you can see there I've already installed the uh, dowel pin in the bottom of the gland. Uh, you want to make sure that when you install that you want it deep enough that it doesn't interfere with the bottom of the seal. The seat will have a, a notch in it and you want to make sure that that dowel pin doesn't protrude higher than that notch. Uh, when you take the seal out of the box you want to inspect the face. You want to make sure that it's clean of any debris, um, any smudges or oil will cause the seal to leak. If, if need be clean it with a quick drying um, solvent such as like brake cleaner. We're going to mark where that dowel pin is and then we're also going to mark the edges of the notch in the bottom of the seat. Um, this is just to aid in installation so that you can line up the notch with the dowel pin and it won't um, be in the way. What we do is we're going to lube the o-ring on the outside of the stationary seat. Here at Cornell we use a product such as STP engine treatment. Um, just a light coating enough to allow the o-ring to roll in the groove. If you don't want to overdo it because if you get this on the face of the seal it will cause it to leak. So when you go to press the stationary seat into the gland you want to take the three marks you made and you want to center the two that are on the seal over the line that's made in the gland. That'll make sure that the dowel pin is centered inside the groove in the bottom of the seal. And then we're just going to press the stationary seat into the seal gland. You want to double check and look at the bottom of the seal and make sure that it's not raised in any, on any of the sides. Um, it should sit flat against the bottom of the gland. Okay, the next step is we're going to put the seal gland on over the shaft sleeve. Uh, you want to make sure that your gasket is on the bottom side of the gland. You're going to slide it over the shaft sleeve all the way back um, towards the back of the sleeve. That way it is out of the way when you put the back plate on. Um, it's very important that you put the bolts to the gland into the gland now as once you have the back plate on a lot of times you won't be able to get the bolts into the gland. Next step we're going to put the rotating element onto the sleeve we're itself. Do first is we're going to take the set screws and we're going to back them out so that they don't interfere with the bore of the seal. A um, couple things you'll notice are the puzzle piece looking pieces. Those are spacers to keep the graphite from being smashed during shipping. And then we will loosen the screws on the back side of the seal to release those spacers so that we can remove them. So all you have to do is just break the tension on the bolts, loosen them up slightly, and those little puzzle pieces will come right out. So you'll notice on the back side of the, the puzzle pieces there's a what looks to be a graphite ring. That is what is sealing the seal to the shaft sleeve. And it does that by when you tighten the screws on the back side, it will smash that 
foil down and it'll seal against the sleeve. So you put the rotating element onto the shaft sleeve, the seal face pointed towards the gland, and you're going to set the back of the seal to that mark you made 1.78 inches from the stuffing box face of the back plate. Tighten down the set screws, and they only need to be snug tight. You don't want to over tighten them, it will gouge the shaft sleeve itself. Next you're going to go around evenly and across, you're going to tighten down the screws on the back side of the seal to clamp down on that graphite ring. You want to go in a crisscross pattern and just tighten them down snug and evenly. So once those are tight, you can pull the gland forward up against the rotating assembly. And then the next step will be to install the back plate. We'll slide that over the shaft and the seal. And then we're going to tighten all eight bolts down. Okay, so once you have all the bolts on the back plate tight, um, it's time to tighten the seal gland up against the rotating part of the seal. You'll notice you should have about eighth, an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch left to compress the seal. And again, side to side, um, tightening the bolts a little bit at a time. And then once you get the seal gland down, you're going to snug that tight against the back plate. So just double check, make sure all of your bolts are tight on the seal gland. You can rotate the shaft and make sure that it turns. You should have just a light amount of tension. If the shaft itself does not turn, your measurement is too short and your seal is pushed too far forward. Um, if you don't feel any resistance at all, then there's a chance that your seal is too far back.